welcome one and all to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartuk-30. Last time with our group of heroes, they had encountered a creature known as a Revenant and retrieved Traben's ring. Cabe Silvertongue fell off the roof while possessing the severed finger and the ring and quickly discovered it was a ring of feather falling, at the very least. Welby O'Toole and Sister Elaine were both suffering from horrific injuries and the diminutive halfling had also been poisoned by his encounter with a gas spore from earlier. After defeating their enemy, Zamora lowered a chain and basket into the globe requesting the ring which was given over by the party freely. Tremors struck Fitz Keep, bringing it down and opening a chasm into the ground which quickly swallowed the group. We now move forward with the story. The mage, Lady Irena, blinked several times and realized she was still alive. The smell of a dirty wooden floor assaulted her nostrils as she found herself laying prone. With her head still buzzing from the fall, she reached out and cut herself on some fractured glass. As her dark vision began to focus, she discovered she was in a small room with several bodies around her. Pushing herself up from the floor, she felt gems scattered as she struggled to get upright. Groaning was heard and dark forms began to move around her. Her elven sight recognized the large frame of Fargus as well as the more slender half-elven bard. As Lady Irena got to her knees, she found Sister Elaine also trying to right herself. She was calling out to confirm everyone was okay and received a chorus of questionable answers. Where are we? asked a dazed Sister Elaine. Fargus fumbled around, finding his torch and some flint and steel. A few weak strikes finally sent flames from the torch illuminating the scene. Headaches were felt by everyone as they looked around trying to figure out their situation. For several minutes they looked around and were able to determine that they were in Zamora's pawn shop except that it was completely empty. The numerous trinkets and items that had once adorned the shelves were now barren. The window to the outside showed it was quite dark. Cabe spotted gems scattered across the floor and noticed that they belonged to Welby. He called out to the halfling, but received no answer. The urgency in his voice caused the others to look around frantically. The empty room had no signs of the rogue anywhere, and a noise was heard behind a closed door. The group went silent and moved to the positions around the door. Cabe nodded and Fargus threw open the entry point. His torch caused shadows to bounce off the walls, showing it to be empty as well. As Cabe leaned forward to examine the room closer, a loud crash erupted behind the party as the front door was smashed off its hinges and a quartet of guards rushed in with blades at the ready. Fargus and the others slowly raised their hands in surrender as the armed watch ordered them to their knees. The group did as commanded but then noticed a look of horror on the guards' faces. The men dropped their weapons and fled the building yelling. The quartet slowly lowered their arms and closed their eyes. A moment later, Lady Irena spoke. I probably don't want to look behind me, do I? Cabe and Sister Elaine slowly turned their heads and both looked crestfallen. Fargus and Irena turned to face the new threat and slumped their shoulders in sadness. Behind the party floated a diminutive gas spore. The solitary eye looked at the party as if sad and each of them knew. Fargus O'Toole had succumbed to the spores. Tears began to flow on their faces of the party as they realized they had lost their halfling. Yelling from outside jarred them back into reality that more guards had arrived and they were being ordered out of the building. As the shouts from outside grew more and more heated, the foursome wiped away their tears and nodded to each other. 
The gas spore returned to the room and Fargus slowly shut the door. With weapons slung, the group raised their hands above their heads and moved out through the shattered remains of the door point and outside where they were greeted by a cadre of guards. A familiar figure moved through the tense guards and the party recognized him as Commander Rausch. A large smile crossed his face as he approached the group. Well, well, looky here, boys. We caught ourselves some heroes. Which garnered a great deal of laughter from the guards. The corrupt commander nodded to some of the guards, who quickly moved up and secured the party members by tying their hands behind their back. The gloating master of the guards approached them and demanded to know where their little friend was, but received only silence as a response. Another head nod sent ten worried men into the building. The party members looked at each other concerned, but were relieved when the guards exited and reportedly finding no one else inside. Commander Rausch leaned in, smiling. Don't worry, we'll find that little twerp soon enough. Fargus looked at the man squarely in the eye, telling him, Good luck, you'll need it, you oaf. The angry guard commander summarily smashed the large ranger in the face, causing his lip to bleed. Get this crew out of my sight, yelled out Commander Rausch. The group was roughly lifted into an upright position, and Sister Elaine posed the question of why they were being arrested. Rausch smirked and aptly pointed out that the charge was burglary. In unison, the group exclaimed, Burglary? With the cleric continuing, What did we burgle? Commander Rausch pointed behind them to Zamora's shop. The group erupted into argument, pointing out that they had indeed burglarized the establishment. Wouldn't the fruits of the labor have been still present? The guards restraining them stopped, and they were flummoxed. Eyes narrowed on the guard captain as it was clear he was angry. With clenched teeth, he answered, I suppose your small, troublesome friend has already taken off with the stuff. Guess that's why he isn't here. Sergeant... I told you to get them out of here. The foursome looked at each other, bewildered at their new state of affairs, but none pointed out that Welby was a gas spore hiding in the business. As the guards led them away, the trip to the holding cell became quiet and uneventful. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.